Yeah, I'm here, mate. Oh, good, good, good. All right, so let's go. Do you mind if I ask my question verbally? Yeah, ask it. Go ahead. Yeah, because um, my understanding, um, I did watch it all Tuesday night, which is brilliant. Um, and um, I'm sort of familiar with some of these concepts and looking for smart money, looking gaps in the market. Mm-hmm. I've usually thought um, ICs were more at a move where it goes to like activate people's buy, stop, buy, whatever, then it shoots down to take out stops and goes up, you know, like a spring or a fake out. I don't really understand why in that position there, that would be seen, that smaller little candle would be seen as an IC, as a big sort of unnatural candles. Does that make sense? Yeah, for, for every candlestick, there is a reason behind it. In as much as we're talking about ICs always um, um, taking people's stop loss, in this case, it is the last mitigation area where price actually is showing a sign of reversal. Can you see that? The last mitigation, so the last sell before the buy. Whenever banks are doing that, they do that for a reason. It means they have to come back and mitigate it. That still makes it an institutional candlestick because it hasn't taken out liquidity or taken anybody's stop loss. Does not necessarily mean that. It is not considered as important. The position or the area where it has been created actually plays a key role. So in this case, a supply and demand trader will tell you that this area I see as a rally, base rally. Why? Because I see... And it's, I see a big candlestick right here, a form of consolidation on the on the one minute. That form of consolidation on the one minute and price continued to journey it up. So in this case, if price come around here, there are supply and demand traders looking around this area for a potential buy. I hope that makes sense, Lee. Yeah, kind of. It's sort of sinking in. I've got to sort of mull it over in yeah. my mind. I think this is for you an example on the chat. To well, I, I get what you mean about it. It's, it's relevance in the market structure and uh, what happened at that level previously. Yes. Let's look at this candlestick, for instance. This candlestick right here. All right? This blue candlestick right here. This was the buy, the buy pressure that created the sell. And look, when price broke below it, they still had this candlestick right here going back into that candlestick before the drop. And that's what I'm talking about. On a DXY, it could, it could potentially be like that. Look, we already seen some sort of bullishness around this area. Already seen some sort of bullishness. Why? Because they understand the significance of what they have created over here. So once the candlestick is created, we need to always understand that. What is behind it? What did they do? The last red candlestick, that actually caused the mitigation. The zones that I've marked out straight away into the drop base drop and price began dropping. On Euro USD, we've had a perfect reaction. If we had taken that trade, that should have been in profit straight away. Look at that. That's so clean. So, so clean. On Euro USD. Hopes are not lost. If we break about this structure right here, then we can look for something like this. Price go up, come back down. There is some soft imbalance around this area. We could look in this area for a potential re entry. Could look in this area for a potential re-entry. I hope that makes sense, guys. Thank you very much. Give me a one. Give me a one in the chat box if that makes sense to you. We're taking time to explain. Oh, thank you. No worries, Lee. You're the reason why I'm here. Re-entry for a buy or sell. We're gonna buy because now we have had a clear reaction. And the DXY is, DXY is actually conforming to what we are seeing right now. The DXY is coming down. However, the DXY has not broken market structure, so I'm still not going to watch in that area until the DXY breaks the market structure. Guys, this is what I do every single time. Shifting from the DXY to EURUSD to GBPUSD before I take the trade. Because I don't want to take a trade and see myself peeing back. I don't want to take a trade and see myself peeing back. 
or GJ is simple there. The same thing that G GU did is the exact thing that GJ has done. The exact thing that GJ has done. The same area we're looking at. It came down, took our stop loss, and boom, it's going up. I should have opened my stop loss a little bit. <laughs> but yeah. That's what it is, guys. So now if we can get a clear break of market structure, I don't like this one. I like that one. If we can get a clear break of market structure in this area, then we can look for a potential re-entry on GU. If not, then price is still bearish. Because this is the last blue candlestick right here. Price could potentially react off it. Let me mark it. Price could literally react off this area and straight away it will go down. I hope that is clear. If, if everything is all right here, give me a two and then I'll move on to another pair. But please keep an eye on GU and um, EU for me. If you see the break of market structure, let me know and I'll go back to them. Okay, so one more pair that I was actually looking at is this area. I was looking at Euro NZD. Can anybody on the call tell me the direction, the trend of this Euro, uh, Euro NZD? The direction of bias on this Euro NZD. Anybody on the call, please? It's bearish. Thank you very much. It's bearish. Uh, somebody says it's bullish. Yeah, it's bullish when you look in this area. When you look around this area, as price went up, mitigated the last red candlestick, went up, mitigated the last red candlestick, and now it's going up. So in that case, it's bullish. But if we look at the overall direction, on the higher time frame, we're bearish. And what, what is actually nice about this is I have this area marked right here. Can you look? Can you see in this area? That was my institutional candlestick right here. I'm going to extend it and let's see what happened. Not long enough. So I had this area man. This is my harmonics. This is the reason why I say, guys, harmonics is smart money because I trade with harmonic patterns. And once I'm in profit, I'm looking at potential areas where I could actually sell back down or buy back up. So this area was the area I was looking at. And look what price did. An institutional candlestick sitting right here. Price came back into it and then it dropped. And as it was dropping, it created this structure, market structure right here. So from here, we can see that we have a high, a low, a higher high. And now we have created a low. So what next do, do we want to see? A lower high. We want to see some sort of a lower high being created. So if I pull my fib right here, Every area above the 50% is an area or a position where price could potentially reverse. Sorry, let's change the color. Everywhere above the 50% is a potential area where price could actually reverse. Why fit from there? The reason why I'm fibbing from here and not there is because this is a structure, that is a structure, that is a structure. So if I see this, I see this area as a structure on its own. A high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, lower high, a lower low, lower high. That's so. I hope that makes sense, Eve. Oh, that makes sense. That's the reason why I'm going to pull my fib. Um, no, actually, give me an answer. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm going to pull my fib from here and not here and the actual high because this area has fully mitigated. There is no, there is no importance in actually pulling your fib from here, from the second high. 
Let's look at nine. Let's look at nine. There. You fit from where your cancer is. Here. This is where I fit from. Here. So from the top to here. And that reason is I need a minimum of 50% retracement in this area after the break of market structure. After this break of market structure right here. We broke this market structure and price is retracing back up. And just like I thought in the video on um, on Tuesday, we want to see that form of price coming up. And then we're going to look for our institutional candlesticks to play off. So on the one hour time frame, I have this areas mark, one of one area, one point of interest. So this is one of my point of interest, POI. If you see POI on the chat is a point of interest. So I have one point of interest right here and then the second point of interest right here, depending on which one price actually respects. In this area, the candlestick has got long wick right here. So I'm not, I'm not really confused about taking the trade right here. And of course, come on. Sorry guys. And of course, one thing about this area is because, where was I, 30 minutes time frame. One thing about this area is because there's a long wick right here and we can clearly see. Can anybody see some sort of equal high right here? Give me a one if you can see that, some sort of equal high right there. Thank you very much. So in taking the trade around this area, I'm a bit, I'm a bit skeptical. Like I want to go in, but I don't want to. That's the reason why price is there, but I'm still hesitant as to whether to go in or not go in. So right now I'm just playing the waiting game. If it gives me the opportunity, I'll take it. If it don't, then no, I'm not taking it. So now I'm going to scale in. I'm on I'm my first, first point of interest. Look at what I do very carefully. If, price gets to my point of interest and I'm right on my computer. I don't set limit others. I leave price to do what they have to do. So I want to see price on a one minute time frame break a solve market structure. If we look around this area, we can see that price was actually accumulating. So we can call this area, this is some sort of distribution right here. If you know about Wyckoff, you know this. There's some sort of distribution um, distribution schematic. I can't really talk about this right here because um, this is quite advanced. With time, one one time one, one of the times of my session, I will be I will be teaching Wyckoff, explaining some of the things that I have on my charts. So the buy climax, the automatic rally, the secondary test, the sign of weakness. The up thrust, the sign of weakness. Probably we could have this area as our U turn. Up thrust after distribution. We could have that area as our U turn and potentially price could sell off. Until then, I'm not happy to sell this. I'm waiting for price to break below this area. And once price breaks below this area, I am going to sell it. Oh, that makes sense, guys. So this is a potential point of interest. If you want to take note of my areas, feel free. I think 1.74046 and 1.4448. So in this areas are where I'm looking at for potential sell-off. If I should sell here, my stop loss is going to be above this area where the equal high is. No, actually, I'll just leave it right here on this wick. And the reason why I'll leave it just on this wick is because once price gets to this area, it will definitely go through it. So if you take the sell right from here, once it is confirmed on the one minute, you can put your stop loss on this wick. 
If you take this up from here, you can put your stop loss right here and you're all done. Okay, where will you be targeting? The areas you'll be targeting is this equal law right here. So let me put the setup there. So assuming we take the trade from here, our stop loss is gonna be here. And our TP is going to be here. And that will be a one to six. You risk 1% of your account to make 6% growth. And if you take the trade from here, you risk 1% of your account to grow your account by 9%. So in both ways, whichever one that actually plays, guys, is, is a sweet setup <laughs> right here. We wait for this break of market structure, a pullback, and then we sell. Hope that's clear. Anybody want me to look at any other pair? DAX, okay, DAX, DAX, DAX. Okay, before I look at DAX, always, this is what I do. The direction of DXY will let me know what DAX is going to do. The direction of DXY will let me know what DAX is going to do. If the, if the DXY is going up, DAX should be giving me a downtrend. Do you see that, guys? Um, DI. <laughs> I can't see your name, actually, so that's what I call you. Never knew that. Okay, so every single time, every single time you want to trade DAX, pay attention to what the dollar currency is doing as well. If the DXY is going up, that, DAX is what? I think there's one more nugget that I can give out today. The DAX is coming down. So I will not take a buy setup if I see that the DXY is bullish. No. The same way I will not take a buy setup on US 30 because US 30 is also going to go down. NASDAQ is going to go down. S&P is going to go down. On what time frame is best to enter DAX on? On DAX, I would say stick to five minutes time frame and one, um, 15 minutes because the higher you go, the higher your risk. So make sure that you pay attention to um, the time frame you're actually looking on DAX, 15 minutes time frame and five minute time frame potentially. So if the DXY is gaining value, all the indices are coming down. All of them are coming down. Right now, I see a break of market structure right here. Price came back to full the imbalance into that candlestick and it's looking to go up, just like DAX is doing. Just like DAX is doing on the OPSI side. Where is it? Oh, sorry, DX on the OPSI side. So if we can get the DXY to actually pull down right here, then I can give a I can give a go ahead and tell you guys go ahead and buy Euro USD GBP USD, and you know what you can actually buy AUD USD NZD USD. You can sell USD card. Actually, let me write it down. C. Let me just annotate B O S. DXY and buy EU. Sorry, guys. GU, AU, and you and sell you card. 
E chef in I don't want I don't want to call USD JPY. I'm currently in a USD card buy from Harmonix. Yes, USD card buy. We had a buy right here. Everybody in my Harmonix um, boot. This morning I sent out this trade on USD card, and it's it's floating in profit right now. So this is this 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 is what we do in the um in the harmony book. We bought from the bottom right here, and look, the DXY gave us the bullish, the bullish signal that we needed. What is it, DXY? We got the bullish signal that we needed on DXY, and all of a sudden, USD card has given us the trade that we wanted. So everybody in the harmony book group. Well done for taking that set up. The floating in profit. I think we entered from here. So that should be 30, almost um, 35 pips in profit. I'm currently in the USD card. All right, this is amazing. <laughs> no worries, guys. This is what I do. I mark up the chart on my own and then I feel free to give it to people. How do you join the group? Please speak to your team manager or potentially contact April. And then yeah, we we will we will link you up into the group. Cause just like I said, in as much as I want to help people, I want it to be um I want the team leaders to agree as to why I'm doing it before I actually allow people in. It's, I'm just doing it to help people, but then it's is about coordination, and we we need to coordinate and agree on certain things. The chat always confuses me a bit. So I have to observe what's it does. Yes, please always wait. Once you have find harmonix chat I mean. Now I, I actually I actually use this. I actually draw the harmonic patterns myself. In this case, I can't I can't I can't talk through this right now because there's a lot involved. But everybody in the harmonic book group understands that I use this based on fib levels. So if I fib right here, this is a deep crap pattern. So the retracement I have here is 88.6 and the retrace retracement I have right here is 1.618 level. Everybody in the harmonic book group understands that I use FIB levels in order to draw these patterns. Harmonic charts, I mean, yes, that's what I mean, yeah. For now, for now, I would say stick to whatever you're doing. If you're in the group, you can, you can be watching Ray Robinson on Go Live. I think it's channel 26. Ray Robinson on Go Live, he teaches how to draw the harmony pattern for yourself. And guys, I see where can we watch your recordings? Yeah, I've got I've got all of them recorded. Some of them on my YouTube channel. I can I can send it. I can send it to you. Just message me and then I'll send it to you. Ray Robinson is awesome. Ah uh, yeah, April knows about that. Ray is just a guide. He does wonders on the chat. So yeah, guys, right now we've looked at it. I've already given you the directional bias for DAX. So anybody looking at DAX, you know what you're doing right now. Huge eye opener. Thank you. for You're welcome, April. You're welcome. Just like I said, AU doing the same thing. Let's confirm NU. NU kind of doing the same thing. Just like I said, if you don't see the break of market structure, guys, we are not taking it. On NU, I want to see price go above this area. Um, I think I should give the numbers to people before they confuse themselves and, and come back to me, Francis. I hate stop loss. I hate stop loss. Yeah. On AU, I want to see price go above this area. Once price goes about that area, you are happy to actually do a market execution. Put your stop loss right below this area and you're fine. GJ, GJ is in profit. The same area that we picked it from. We picked GU from. GJ is doing the same thing. But GJ has not broken market structure either. So you can clearly see this area. I think we have the break of market structure. Yes, we do. 
So guys, you can look around this area for a potential GJ buy. That is um, 135.926 area. You can look around that area. However, yes, DXY is doing the job. DXY is doing the job. We've got the break of market structure on DXY. So guys, we're good to actually take this GJ trade. Let me just set it up. And I'm gonna target this area. Let me, let me just put it in my MT4. Sorry guys, I'm 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 taking the trade, that's why I'm not talking. All right, yeah, so who's asking a question? Hi Francis, my name is Lee. Thanks for this. I am new here and this is my First, with the explanation is grace. I think I will need your help and guidance. See, all right, just go, just go, my, go on my YouTube page or stick to the trade house educators. Rokuma, um, we have um, we have Rokuma, Mike Mouse, Mike Navarrete, Zach McDonald's, all them lot. They they're just there to help you. So just stick to those people, and you get to understand every single thing that I'm teaching. I hope that makes sense, uh, Nee. Buy limit. Yes, right now you can't set a buy limit. You can just do market execution if you want. Don't go in with big lot size because Francis said, use proper risk management, guys. Proper risk management. That is how you win. <laughs> this trade is actually one to seven. So whatever risk... Wherever um, lot size that you're putting in, you're putting in proper lot size. Let's see this. Let me show you this. If you go on my FX book, Forex calculator, position size calculator. So assuming you have a hundred, hundred pounds account, then you're risking 1% of your account. Maybe the stop loss on this trade. What's the stop loss on this trade? seven eight pip stop loss so you put eight pip stop loss in here and you select gbp jpy and you calculate so for 100 pounds account you are only allowed to put in 0 0.01 and if the trade hits stop loss you're only losing one percent of your account one one pound Oh, that makes sense, guys. Always use proper risk management. If you have, if you have a thousand pounds account, you're only going to risk one percent of it. If the trade goes wrong, you're losing ten pounds. But if the trade goes right, you're increasing your account by seven percent. Your account jumps to thousand three hundred thirty-nine. That sort of thing, guys. What is your YouTube channel? Um, let me just put it on for you. If you go on YouTube, Francis Adair Ministries, you should you should find it. I've got some few videos in there where you can watch and then literally you can you can understand most of the things that I'm teaching right here. GJ is already in profit, so we we are reducing our risk straight away.
we have eight minutes on the call. If anybody don't have a question, then we will be finishing here until next time we meet again. Anybody has a question? Sorry, I missed the YouTube channel. That's it. I'm going to post it in here. We don't have any question then now. That's it. That's it. We're done for now. But yeah, it's Francis D Ministries. Feel free to go and then make sure you watch it. Same time next week. All right, Clive. Um, next week Thursday. Yeah, we'll be at home. Yeah, next week and set up another one then we can uh, chill uh, money it's not money that's what I'll be learning price drop one day if coffee can make me a boss then yeah I can start teaching price drop but now yeah if you want price drop then go to coffee straight away he's he's a beast on price drop but yeah this is us for today thank you all for jumping on the call Thank you, Francis. Francis. You're welcome. Thank you, Francis. Yeah, thank you, Francis. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Francis. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.